first Apple II was a pretty minimal machine with 4K of memory. But then, see, people started writing programs that needed 1K of memory at first for a little basic game, and then 2K, and then eventually they spent enough time and wrote one that needed 4K. And by now the Commodore and Radio Shack computers came out. There were three of us, all positioned in a, you know, you know, anyone could win the race. What happened was, all of a sudden, software needed more than 4K of memory, more than 8K of memory. Things like VisiCalc came out by about 69, and floppy disk came out from Apple. We were the first ones on a, on a, uh, in the personal computers to come out with a floppy disk that required more than 8K of memory to run. And these other computers had been designed non-expandable, without the slots to grow in directions that they didn't think were going to happen. And the Apple II had 48K capability built in. So these, all of a sudden these programs were so significant a market force that the other companies were left behind and Apple took first place only because they could not expand their memory. That was the major factor. They had to go back to the drawing boards, reintroduce their non-compatible computers a year later. Um, that's how we uh, positioned ourselves as the leader. The distribution channels, all the computer stores were emerging and Apple was the... Uh, the leading candidate. We had good marketing staff. Most of the little startup hobby companies were a couple of engineers like me and Steve Jobs. Design a product and write a little ad and, and put it in the hobby magazine and maybe you'll sell some products. Uh, Mike Markula knew what sort of deals you had to make to what distributors and the contracts, how they should read. He'd been through all this at Intel, so um, uh, we got established very well.